I'm Carl Menard. I'm the Aquatic Resources Manager here at the UC Davis Bodega Marine Lab. I've been out here about uh, 22 years. UC Davis is an ag school, so there's a focus already on farming, and we just extended that to the marine environment to look at ways to satisfy food supply for humans. But we also do uh, education uh, for the UC students and visiting students, and uh, we also do public education with a number of uh, display aquaria and uh, animals and systems that we display to the public. This facility was uh, located here in Bodega Bay because of the uh, coastal upwelling and because of the diversity of organisms. We wanted to look at the conservation of this area, but also to have a living laboratory where we could study the ecology of this area and, uh, and try and learn why this area was so productive. We've really had 50 years of protection, and, uh, and now that we have uh, threats to that environment, we have ocean change, uh, we have uh, elevated temperatures, and uh, now the acidification of the ocean, uh, it's put us in a perfect position to really understand how this ecology could change and what impact that could have for the future. The long-term forecast for our ability to, to generate food from the sea uh, is dim. It doesn't look good, and so we really need to focus on aquaculture and the ability to grow animals uh, for human food sources in a, in a controlled environment. One of the projects we're working on here uh, right now at the Bodega Marine Lab is, is to try and develop a new species for aquaculture. And in this case, we're looking at the giant rock scallop uh, as a potential new aquaculture organism. It's a huge scallop, and so the size of the meat is, is significant. Culinary-wise, it's really one of the best scallops um, that's available. It's never been available commercially. As we do the research and development of developing a protocol for, for culturing that animal, we need to be able to feed that animal. And uh, it's critical for us, especially when the animal's in its larval stage, is to be able to grow single-celled, single-species algaes, uh, live algaes, that are sterile cultures. Typically, artificial light is developed for the human eye, for what's pleasing and comfortable to the human eye. And generally, those wavelengths of light, that spectrum of light, is of uh, very little value biologically. Characterizing light and uh, understanding how light uh, participates in the process of, uh, of animal development has really become a, an important thing for us. We're excited to use Kessel products to allow uh, for algae growth um, under a controlled environment so that we could then go back and, uh, and utilize that on a daily basis as a food supply for these larval animals as they develop. We can now grow things like Macrocystis giant kelp uh, in our displays. Uh, our invertebrate and soft-bodied animals uh, are doing exceedingly well under the Kessel lighting. Uh, the fish are doing exceedingly well. Also, the public that comes to view um, these tanks really gets a more natural representation of what it would look like in that environment. And so we can, uh, we can adjust the spectrum of light to really mimic a deeper water environment and allow, allow people to see these animals um, in the illumination that they would expect to find in a natural environment. So it's really changed the quality of the displays and, um, and, the, and the viewing experience for, for both the public and the research staff uh, that work out here. And now that we have an ongoing relationship with Kessel uh, and we're expanding the use of their products, it's great to, uh, to, to sort of know that company and know they stand behind their products and know that they're going to work with us to uh, keep expanding our ability to, uh, to control light and to uh, really characterize light in, in a way that's meaningful for us.